Hey, good morning. So uh, today's question comes from Mike, and his question is, what is my opinion of a grot box? Now, if you've not heard the term before, you might be wondering, what the hell's a grot box, Adam? Well, a grot box is basically just a crappy sounding secondary reference to check your mixes on to see how they translate. So that might be um, something like one of these Auratones, these small square speakers you see which uh, a van tone has made kind of a modern copy of. And I think even Behringer makes something like this. They make a copy of everything. Why wouldn't they have one? So that's what it is. And what is its purpose? Well, kind of two, two purposes. One is to simulate being able to check what your music sounds like on a low quality playback system. So maybe that would be in the past a TV or a, a boombox or a, a crappy home stereo. The second thing is, in mixing, the most important part of your mix is in the mid-range. And when you're playing back on something like this, which has a limited bandwidth, you know, it doesn't have the full bass, it doesn't have the extended top end, and what you're left with really is the meat and potatoes of what makes up a mix and what makes it translate, which is, that's right, the mid-range. Now, Time has moved on. So back in the day, yeah, you would be faced with a lot of really subpar playback systems. But if you go to Ikea, you know, you can buy like a $99 thing which works with Sonos, which sounds fantastic. Your average like Samsung TV also sounds fantastic. And it's getting harder and harder to find use cases where you have to deal with these crappy, super crappy playback systems. So that side of things is kind of becoming less important. So the true value really is in forcing you to focus on the mid-range. Now, I'm going to tell you a quick story. So about uh, 10 years ago, I did an album for quite a famous Irish band, and I recorded the album and mixed the album, and then the label people decided that they wanted to get this famous five grand a track radio mixer to do uh, some radio mixes of a couple of the singles. Now this guy's called Chenzo Townsend and as part of his setup he had one of these portable DAB digital radios made by a company called Pure and I thought it was a great idea of checking his mix on this thing and I ripped it off because of course I want to be the 5k a day radio mixer guy myself right. So and I used this thing and I used it for exactly the purpose that I'm telling you about what's it going to sound like on a less than ideal situation in your mom's kitchen, you know, and it's a radio. But one more point I want to touch on is using something like a little radio as a reference isn't going to really help you know what your song exactly will sound like on the radio because a huge amount of, of that comes down to the broadcast processing on the output of the station. They use something called Optimod or something very similar which has an EQ, lots of multiband stuff going on, which really quite dramatically changes the sound of, of music to make it work better on broadcast. So don't be fooled into thinking using something like that's going to help you get a better grip of how it's going to go on radio, because it doesn't. It's just more of a case of how is it going to sound on some kind of small device. So to sum up, what do I think? I actually think it's quite a good idea to have something like that. And it can be as cheap as you like, as long as it's got a line of, in of some kind, because you it might highlight things because you're focused on the mid that you have kind of mixed, missed, you know, in, in your mix when you're working on it. And it, it can be helpful. Is it super, super important as it once was? I'm thinking less so. Okay, the last thing is this. I personally stopped using this technique as I went on in time because I kind of really realized that the more time I felt I spent on one set of speakers in one room listening to every kind of music under the sun, you know, well-made commercial music mixed well uh, across various genres, that over time you start to develop an instinct based on that listening experience on that one set of speakers. So you start to know how much bass you need. You start to know how much top you need. You start to know how loud a vocal should be. And this varies genre by genre sometimes. But 
The only way you can really do that is by putting in the time and listening to music. Oh no, what a shame, right? So there we go. A bit of a long, circuitous journey there, but that's my opinion of drop boxes. By all means, get one, give it a go. It can be fun and useful. And um, I hope it was useful to you in some way. So please share, subscribe, like, do all that good stuff and leave me a comment below if there's something else you'd like to get an opinion on. And thank you guys so much and happy mixing.